My name is Sean Morrison, and I have the privilege of chairing the Brookdale Department of Geriatrics and Palliative Medicine for the Mount Sinai Health System. Our society is facing one of the greatest health challenges we have ever seen, and that is the growth of the population of older adults. In less than 10 years, the number of persons over the age of 65 in this country will exceed the number of people under 21 for the first time in all of human history. In 1982, the first chair of this department, Robert Butler, recognized that if healthcare in this country was going to match the needs of its citizens, the focus needed to be on developing leaders who could care for the special needs of older adults. This department was founded on the principle that healthcare needed to meet the needs of its society and it needed to adapt as the demographics of that society changed. Over the past 30 years, this department has led innovations in healthcare for older adults developing models to provide age-friendly health care for people in hospitals and ambulatory clinics, training the leaders that have gone out throughout the United States to establish divisions and departments focused on the needs of older adults. Its research has led to fundamental changes in how we think about care for our most vulnerable patient populations. When COVID-19 hit New York City in the spring of 2020, the work that this department had done, the leadership of its founding chair, Robert Butler, my predecessor, Albert Sue, positioned us to respond to the needs of New York City in a way that I don't think any other institution could. The data that we had from China, from Italy, and from other earlier hotspots made us realize that the population at highest risk for severe COVID and indeed for mortality was the group of people that we care for, those people over the age of 65. When the first case of COVID was reported in New York City, knew that our population, the people that we take care of, those over age 65, were going to be at greatest risk for severe COVID and indeed for dying of this disease. From the time that first case was reported, we put together a plan to ensure that our population would be cared for, that they would be safe, and that we would have a plan in place to provide the medical care, the added layer of support to families, and the security that the New York City population needed as COVID rampaged through our city. What were those preparations? What were those innovations? And how, how were we prepared to do it? First of all, we put in place a system to ensure that we touched every single patient in our ambulatory clinics, that we contacted every single patient to talk to them about their wishes for care, to talk to them about how to avoid COVID and how to stay safe, and what to do if they develop symptoms. Our physicians reached out to every single one of our patients. We rapidly developed a system of telehealth so that we could care for our patients in their homes without them having to leave that safety and so that they didn't have to have people, healthcare providers, 
coming in to see them. We provided telehealth through something as simple as a telephone call, through video conferencing over a number of different platforms. And for those people who needed face-to-face in-person care, we expanded our home-based medical care so that we could go to see them and keep them safe rather than have them come in to the hospital. In our hospitals throughout the health system, we embedded our clinicians into the teams that were responsible for caring for the incredible numbers of patients who were coming in with COVID illness. We embedded our clinicians in the emergency departments. We embedded our clinicians in the intensive care units. We embedded our clinicians within hospital medicine. Wherever patients with COVID were treated within the Mount Sinai Health System, a member of the Brookdale Department of Geriatrics and Palliative Medicine was there to ensure that their special needs were met. We developed some very new and innovative models of care delivery that we took from concept to innovation to scale in a matter of days rather than a matter of months. For example, we created a 24-hour telephone hotline that allowed overextended and overwhelmed emergency physicians, intensive care unit physicians, to refer patients to us so we could discuss their goals of care with them, we could advise around symptom management, and we could provide support to their families who could not see them because no visitors were allowed in any New York City hospital during COVID. What allowed this department to scale up so quickly? I think it was really three key elements, three key elements that this department has been doing since its founding. The first was to create leaders. Leaders not just in the care of older adults, but leaders in health systems, leaders in hospitals, leaders in community centers. For example, the senior vice president of the Mount Sinai Health System who was responsible for coordinating clinical care throughout the pandemic, was a graduate of our fellowship program. He knew the importance of high quality care for older adults during this pandemic and made sure that the patients of the health system received that care and that our department was on the front lines. It was leadership within the department graduates of our training program who developed the innovations, who developed the care models, who understood the need throughout the health system for high quality care for older adults. It was our research. It was the research that we had done around how do you deliver high quality care to people outside of the hospital, outside of doctor's offices, that allowed us to create new models of care that met the needs of the population. And it was our educational efforts. We knew how to train very quickly other clinicians who may not have had training in the appropriate care of older adults or the special needs of older adults and be able to put that on the ground right away when patients and families needed it most. This department has trained the most number of geriatricians, that is persons who care for older adults in the United States. Our graduates exist in hospitals and health systems throughout the country. The models of care that we have developed in Mount Sinai or at Mount Sinai have been implemented in hospitals and health systems throughout the country. And the work of our educators, 
are in terms of providing high quality technical support for the care of older adults have been disseminated throughout the United States. As other parts of the country wrestle with the challenges of COVID, and unfortunately, as the number of cases rise in other cities, such that the experience of New York in the spring is being repeated elsewhere, the work of this department, I believe, will save many, many lives throughout the country the way we did in New York City. It's been an honor and a privilege to be a chair of this department through this troubling time, and I am very much looking forward to a vaccine for COVID and to our work in the next 10 years to continue to address the needs of the rap our most rapidly growing segment of the population, those over the age of 65. As New York City has emerged from the surge of COVID in our spring, I worry about a number of challenges that we are facing and will continue to face. And there are challenges that affect both my patients and our healthcare workers. The first is a sense of isolation. In order to keep our patients safe and in order for our patients to stay safe, they have had to remain in their homes, oftentimes alone or with very, very few visitors. And the sense of isolation, the sense of loneliness, indeed the sense of purpose when one thinks that the time left for one is limited, it may not be decades, maybe a year, it may be two years. And much of that time is going to be spent isolating oneself at home. Those feelings are real. And those are feelings and those emotions are ones that we don't have a good solution for yet. And so one of the challenges and one of the things that our department is working very hard on now is thinking about how do we both bring a social connection to our older adults who need to be physically distanced? And how do we ensure that we recognize in them their mental health needs, identify when isolation and distress becomes major depression, and how do we provide the added layer of support that helps our patients through the next six to nine months before we hopefully have a vaccine? The second challenge that I think we all face is that of the emotional health of our healthcare workers. My faculty experienced and saw more death in three months than many will see in their entire careers. They were often the person holding the iPad so that their patient could say goodbye to their families or loved ones or could have a conversation in the setting of not knowing what was going to happen to them and not being allowed to have their family there. Our faculty, our clinicians, our staff became patients' families. And they did that every single day, hour after hour, minute after minute, and it takes its toll. And as we emerge from the surge in New York City, and hopefully avoid another surge in this fall, we need to think about the emotional health of our healthcare workers because long after we have a vaccine for COVID, the after effects of caring for people in this crisis will be with us and will be with our healthcare workforce.